will now proceed with the retirement ceremony. Special Orders Number AC009796, dated 5 May 1990, from the Department of the Air Force, Washington, D.C. Effective 31 March 1991, Colonel John B. Molman is relieved from active duty, Technology Integration Center, Air Force Communications Command, Scott Air Force Base, Illinois. Retire effective 1 April 1991 in accordance with the Air Force Regulation 35-7 in grade of Colonel by order of Donald B. Rice, Secretary of the Air Force. Certificate of Retirement will be now presented. To all who shall see these present greetings, this is to certify that Colonel, Mo Colonel John B. Bowman, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Air Force on the first day of April, 1991. In addition, Colonel Bowman is receiving a certificate of appreciation from President George Bush. May I have your seats, please? Colonel Bowman? Chair. General Ludwig, General Steele, General Torres, General Zaire, General Landry, General Audience, <laughs> General Hopefuls. <laughs> it's a great day. I've been uh, I've been looking forward to this day for 26 years. Um, you know, it's a it's an emotional time. I guess uh, General Steele was worried that I was going to cry. I may just for the heck of it. No, I won't. <laughs> but uh, General Ludwig uh, relived my career. He left out one part. Though. I actually started wearing the uniform when I was a sophomore in high school because my parents chose to send me away to a private school, so it was Northwestern Military and Naval Academy in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. So at age 15, I put on an Army uniform. Once a year, we wore a Navy uniform. And after I graduated uh, from there, I didn't want any part of either one of those, so I joined the Air Force. <laughs> uh, Ironically enough, I, I didn't know what I was going to be doing ultimately when I was in high school, but in my senior year, they made me a cadet officer and gave me a saber and then tried to figure out what to do with me, which is the story of my life. <laughs> and strangely enough, uh, in, the, in the structure that we had there was a battalion. So they made me a communications officer. And that's really, I guess, where it started. Now, what that meant was, that I ran the movie projector on Friday and Saturday. <laughs> and I also got the luxury of being the first one up in the morning to turn on the PA system to play the record of the bugle calls. So that's uh, what the communications officer did then, and really, I, I'm still doing it. So <laughs> Every once in a while, I have to play with the Harvard graphics and, uh, and all this stuff here. So it hadn't changed much. Then. Uh, I did join the Air Force and ROTC because I tried to figure out uh, what I was going to do for a career. I didn't know anything about writing resumes. I never worked before. Uh, well, I did have one summer job at the telephone company, um, Bell Telephone, and they made me a traffic engineer, a real one. I thought I was going to be running the parking lot, but I did run traffic engineer. But uh, I thought the easiest way to find a job is just to go with the Air Force, and at that time, they, uh, you know, we were in the space age and uh, a lot of activity uh, with the, the uh, Apollo hadn't got going yet, whatever the first programs were, but, yeah, Mercury. And uh, as I told them last night at the party, um, in my senior year, they said, uh, well, we've got to fill out this Form 90, and I think that was still the Form 90 back then. They said, where do you want to go? And I said, well, I want to go into the space business if I'm going to be an electrical engineer and all the actions down in Cape Canaveral or Cape Kennedy, whatever they called it uh, back then. And they said, uh, you know, you're crazy. Everybody just wants to go down there. They, well, don't even put it on the form. I said, well, what, where can I go? Where else is the activity in the Air Force? They said, Vandenberg. Go out there, better chance. So we wrote it down. Vandenberg and a couple other places. And it was three months later, here come my orders to Patrick Air Force Base, Cape Kennedy. <laughs> So 
So right then I knew what the assignment process was like. <laughs> and uh, filling out the Form 90 has never had my undivided attention. <laughs> because I put down all sorts of things and have never gone to any place that was on my Form 90. Never. And uh, that's the way it is. And over the years I've, uh, I've really met some fantastic people and, and done a lot of, of interesting things. Uh, uh, music's a, a hobby, uh, as, well, maybe it isn't a hobby, maybe uh, the Air Force is a hobby. I've always been accused of that. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I got to meet an awful lot of people through the music business. And uh, it's brought uh, a lot of people through my house, too many people through my house. We figured it out. Uh, I, I looked through my book because I logged all of this down. In the four and a half years I've been here, I have done 97 organ concerts someplace and 58 scheduled parties at the house. That doesn't count the General Steele's just wandering over all the time <laughs> and the little informal things after the sessions. But the resale value of my house is going to be zero. <laughs> and I gave up cleaning the carpeting. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's introduced me to some people that maybe otherwise I wouldn't have, uh, have met. And, uh, and I really have uh, appreciated the honor of, of meeting all of these people, a lot of which I've come to see back here at, at Scott uh, <coughs> our paths across. I've uh, had some terrific people work for me. I've worked for some terrific people. And uh, I think everybody that works here at Scott and, and AFCC and the Tech uh, are some of the greatest in the, in the world. And I have uh, enjoyed working with all of you the last four and a half years. I'm not, uh, I am retiring. When my goal was to retire before I was 50. And that's coming to pass. Tuesday, I will be 50. Just happened at the 2nd of April, I'm 50. But I, I didn't retire before I was 50. And retire is the operative word, because I'm not going to go to work. I still don't know how to fill out a resume, let alone a Form 90. So <laughs> I'm not going to leave the area. I'll be around. I can't leave. I can't get my organ out of the house. <laughs> it's there forever. I've got the pipes in the way in the hot tub, and it just isn't worth it. <laughs> so it's there, and I'm going to leave feet first. That's the only way I'm going to go. But uh, I'll be here in the area and uh, going around uh, uh, entertaining. And, and I told some of the people last night that uh, if you uh, ever need any help here, any guidance, fee for service, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll be around if anybody wants any war stories or just want to come by and say hi or, or whatever. But uh, I will be here. I want to thank my family. My mother uh, is, is here from Chicago. And my brother is from Chicago. And he's here with his wife. And my sister over there, she's the, one, the only one with a hat on. <laughs> well, she bought it. She's from Florida. She bought it and she hadn't had any other place to wear it. It's sort of like the white ceremonial uniform. <laughs> well, she's from, from Plantation, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She brought her mink. She hadn't found a place to wear that either. <laughs> but they came. That is the extent of the Molman family. Uh, my parents were only children. And I'm the oldest of three, and my sister second, and, and then my brother, and each of them have have two kids. So when you put the whole family together, that's ten, and that's it. Which is great at Christmas time if you have to buy presents. It's not too good if you're expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm glad they all came. And uh, uh, General Ludwig, I appreciate you and Nancy coming from uh, far and near. And even on leave, they put him to work yesterday. He didn't really want to sit through all those briefings. I understand. But I, uh, <laughs> fire host to it. I appreciate you driving out here. General Steele uh, representing the, the West Coast. I'm glad you came. Uh, and uh, General Torres is from out of town also, and he came by. And I need to acknowledge Mrs. Fairfield. General Fairfield's uh, TDY uh, shut down the OTAC or whatever they're doing out there at Wright Pad, I think. And I uh, appreciate all the ladies coming by, General Landry and, and Colonel Kelly and from over at MAC. And, the rest of you that didn't have anything else to do this morning. <laughs> it's, like I say, it's been a great 26 years, and uh, if I had to do it all over again, you bet I would. And uh, so with that, I want to wish you all a happy Easter, and 
uh, God bless you all. Let's keep in touch. Thank you.